Wow, the lake is so calm today. This is Lake Michigan, just for those that might not know. All right, guys, so we are starting the ride back home to Onsonagan. Wavy, stay up here. We are on M22 right now. Stands for, I think, Michigan 22. And when you're here in Michigan, you'll often see stickers, like on the back of people's cars and windows and stuff, that say M22. And they do that a lot in Michigan here. They have, you know, different routes. I see some for, like, M41, which is up in the UP there. And it kind of signifies, like, nice drives and nice rides, you know, around the state. And I've always, I never knew what this M22 was. You know, I don't know a whole lot about the Lower Peninsula of Michigan, really. I'm not a Michiganian. That's Michiganite? Michiganite? <laughs> As you guys know. So I do know a lot about the UP, though. I've been there long enough. But yeah, we are uh, we're riding the TW200 back. Sometime along this trip, I'm going to do a little walk around for you. And tell you guys what I think initially. Um, but I can tell you right now, I, I like it. Man, I really like the bike. It needs some more modifications. I'm going to put a bigger sprocket, front sprocket on it to give me a little more top end. Right now it likes to cruise at about 45, 50. Of course it'll do like 70, but you're screaming. I'd like to get that to about 55, 55 mile an hour cruising speed. And I think another, another tooth on the front sprocket will do that. And uh, yeah, I like it. I might even start to think if it rides well on the front of the barge, maybe take that this winter. I've got other, you know, smaller scooters I can take, but man, that TW would really get us off on some side trips for the back roads portion of the Backwaters and Back Roads channel. We shall see. So, yeah, let me turn the phone around. Instead of looking at me, let's look at this beautiful scenery. Lake Michigan. Wow, it's just so... It's another gem, you know. Guys, always, I'm always uh, sharing with you Superior Land and singing its praises but lake michigan it's just another gym it's really different it's a totally different kind of lake different temperatures and different beaches and different just different i've heard that all of the great lakes have their own little character to them and you know hopefully we'll figure that out on this channel together see that firsthand i'll try to share it with you as i learn it myself yeah, let me see if I can hone in on this beach a little bit. You can see all these rocks down there. And of course, it's kind of, I don't know if it's picking up on the camera too well, but <clears throat> it's, a, it's an emerald green. It's just like, you know, I imagine what it's like being in the Caribbean or something. It's so beautiful. It's so calm today. Wow. Could be out there on anything. Wavy and I stopped it at this another roadside attraction as Tom Robbins named one of his books. <laughs> it's a good book. <laughs> it's the Cherry Bowl. And I think it's a drive-in theater. And it looks like it's actually still open. You'll see these around the country once in a while in different places, you know, but most of the time they're not going anymore, you know. Think of the past. I remember when I was a kid, I went to a, a few when I was a little little kid, you know, seven, eight, nine. But this one looks like it's going. The sign says, thanks for a great season. And yeah, so we're just walking around taking a look at it. And let me, I'll show you guys here for a few minutes. So here are the, uh, I just talked to the fellow that works here. And these are the original boxes. You hang them, you know, you kind of halfway open your window and you hang it on the window and that's the speaker for for the movie <laughs> that is cool attention by entering this theater all guests agree to respect and obey our drive-ins rules and regulations as stated on the box office handout sheet 
and guests who fail to comply with these conditions at the discretion of the management forfeit the right to legally remain on the premises will be considered a trespasser and dealt with accordingly. Stern words. Okay guys, we are trying to find a place to camp tonight. And we came inland a little bit off of the shore, a little less populated, a little more rural. Usually, that's just kind of a rule of thumb anywhere you're riding. Land is cheaper and so it becomes more rural and less dense, usually. And I'll show you on the map when I make this video where we're at, sort of, near a town called Central Lake. Kind of heading towards Ellsworth. And there's like this sports complex here. It looks like it was recently built. And I'm going to pop up the hill here. I think I see a little camping spot. Let's check it out. One of the benefits of having a dog is you, when you're stealth camping is you can just kind of say that you're out walking your dog. You know, and so if you wander on to some place you're not supposed to be, you can say, oh, I'm sorry. I was just kind of walking my dog. She's following her nose, chasing rabbits. We're going to see what's up here. What do you think, Beagle? Find us a camp spot. Good morning, guys and gals. Backwaters and back roads here, obviously. So I think it's time. We're going to do a little walk around of the TW200. Tell you a little bit about it. And I'm also gonna show you this beautiful church that we just had to stop at, so let's do it. Let's do the bike first. So we'll call this a nosy beagle bike review. I've shown you guys the big ruckus. You guys have seen the $900 ST1100. You've seen the Elite 250. You've seen a lot of bikes on this channel. Wavy's popping around like she hurt her back leg yesterday. We will attend to that. So, this, the truck go by. This is a 2022 Yamaha TW200. They have a serious coat following. They have more or less made the same bike for like, oh, let me see, figure it out here. 1988 or 87, I think was the first one. However far back that goes. What is that? That is, that is 35 years. They've had a few little changes. They put a disc brake on around the year 2000. I might get some of this, you know, a little wrong. There are people that just love these bikes. They will come and correct me. I hope you come to my channel. If you did find my channel, our channel, I should say, this is Wavy Gravy, the Pocket Beagle. If you found our channel uh, through this review, please stick around. We do a lot of cool stuff. I'm considering taking this bike on the front of the Beagle Barge uh, Beagle Adventure this winter. Um, I got to do a few measurements first just to make sure, but this is the first trip I have ever, I got this bike with 68 miles on it last April and here it is almost October and I put like two miles on it going to the hardware store and back once in a while just to keep the battery charged. But this is my first time riding it. We are riding from Ludington, Michigan, back up across the Mackinac Bridge to the Western UP I'll probably have 800 miles on it by the time I get home. So far, I'm really liking it. I will point out a few things that I would like to change, but uh, I got a really good deal. The, the only time I ever buy anything is it's gotta be a good deal. This bike, I basically got it for the price of like a, 
having no accessories, okay? So another way to put that would be all the accessories I can point out came for free in a way. And the story is the guy retired. He was going to do the TAT, which is the Trans-American Trail. For those that don't know, it's a, it's a way to get across country from coast to coast on almost entirely dirt roads. And he built it to do this, to do the trip. And then he hurt his back. And he never got to do it. So he put it up for sale. I spotted it. Facebook Marketplace. Like, I buy a lot of stuff. And we made a deal. And I got it for basically what I would have paid for a TW200 with more or less new. 68 miles. Without any accessories on it. Now, he put the front rack. I'll get back to the problem with that. <laughs> uh, the lights. The bark busters. A updated better aluminum skid plate of course these beautiful aluminum hard cases with the rack I believe they're happy trails brand I'll have to go back and look but and also the I'm gonna move this gas tank because I carry a beagle but it's like a two a two gallon like one of those roto roto uh, you know the rotos you know <laughs> let me uh let me try to get i'm gonna i'll open the other side it'll, it'll come it'll it'll open easier i've got a tent and a sleeping bag stuffed in there and the thing's under pressure so so these open this way they've got these really nifty locks that kind of suck it down and make them watertight probably airtight too uh and you can you know they're, they're big they're nice i like them and they come off really easy they just have these these turn screws in here, if you can see that, and you do two of them, and then they have little brackets in the bottom, which click, you can stick them, put them on your park bench or whatever, wherever you're camping, you know, easy on and off. And what else did he put on here? Might be a couple more things. I'm something down there with a chain, like a chain guide that, that all the forums recommend doing. The problem with this front rack, of course, you put anything on the front of the bike, and it's blocking the headlight. It's the dumbest thing, you know, it's dumb. So, I'll do some research, because if something has been modified in these bikes, someone has done it. They have, people love these bikes. They have a following. They they were made, I think, for like farmers to ride their fence lines, and they're really low geared. Of course, you know, I'll just point out if you haven't noticed already, they got these kind of big, wide tires that are different than a, just even a dual sport. It's got a really wide back tire. And, you know, good for sand, good for just going slow, you know. They're very easy to ride. They just stay up straight. Not very fast. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to put a, probably a bigger one-tooth bigger sprocket in the front and try to get another five miles an hour cruising speed. Right now it likes to cruise at about 45.50, which seems to be normal for a stock TW200. I'd like to get it up to where it kind of cruises at about 55 with under reasonable rpms you know so and i've done that i've had a, a couple of 200 cc dual sports in the past i had a dr 200 and i had a couple of them actually over the years and you know it that solved the problem you can also fiddle with the the rear sprocket too but i'll do some research i'll listen to the guys that have been riding and loving these bikes for a long time because they are people love them <laughs> i'm starting to love this one too i didn't know when i first bought it i thought man why did i buy this i didn't need another bike well I, I have a feeling this is going to be really going to fit a niche. It's going to be a great Upper Peninsula Uper bike. It might ride in the front of the barge well, hopefully. Fingers crossed. We'll see. You know, they're fairly light. I think just stock, they weigh like about 240 pounds, if I'm remembering correctly. Which is not bad. What else can I tell you? Um, I don't know. Wavy. Wavy likes it. Rides back there on her little carrier. And that's it. I don't know. <laughs> what else can I say? They're pretty cool. I'd say about, oh, I'm going to, well, okay. I'm glad I remember this. The tanks are too small. You can only go about 100 miles before they go on reserve. And then you may, might get another, I don't know, 50 or 60. So 150 mile range is not enough for me. Um, people do put bigger tanks on them. And I'm going to get one. I, at the end of this trip, if I decide just wholeheartedly I love this bike, I'm going to order a bigger tank. I'm going to get a better seat, too. Stock tanks are like sitting on a on a 2x4. They're pretty rough on the old 
groin. So, you know, Corbin seed, or I'll do some research, people have figured it out, but they do make aftermarket seats for these that are very comfortable. Probably get one of those, and maybe some bigger foot pegs. They make these wider kind of platform ones that those stock ones are... I'm surprised the guy didn't do it, to tell you the truth. That would have been something I would imagine he would have done, but the guy that set this bike up. But yeah, bigger tank, more comfortable seat, and something with that rack on the headlight, bigger sprocket, you know, sink another 500,000 bucks into it. And I think I'd have like, that's what I'm always looking for is a bike that, you know, a bike, a boat, anything that'll just do almost anything, you know, that's, that's what I like, you know, like the Vagabond is like my Swiss army knife of boats. You've heard me call it that before. And I have a feeling this might become the Swiss army knife, knife of bikes in my life. So we will see. says open to motorcycles and ATVs and 